All right. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm super excited to introduce today's guest, the chosen Juan Juan Salgado. What's going on, my man? What's up, man? Thank you. I'm super excited to be on. Dude, thank you for taking the time out of your day and your on your off day uh, to join us here and, and have this conversation. So uh, before we jump in, I just I want you to introduce yourself, man. Tell people who you are, where you're coming from, anything about yourself that's interesting. Yeah. So my, my name's Juan Salgado and uh, I always tell people kind of like uh, the way that I got into fitness is kind of like the way that a lot of people do. I was just a very insecure kid growing up, very shy, didn't have a lot of muscle. I was like just not the most in shape type of person. I used to play basketball and I loved it. So I was good at basketball, but they always told me that the thing that I lacked uh, was that I just had no strength. Obviously I was short. Uh, I was fast. Uh, but they said that if I wanted to take it to the next level, I would have to build some type of muscle and strength. So that's when I started trying to get into weight training. And uh, my senior year, uh, I hurt my ankle in basketball. So I knew that I prob- probably wasn't going to go to like any type of college. So I just decided to get uh, into the gym more. And I ended up loving it so much. After a few years of working out, I started getting really obsessed with it. I ended up hiring a powerlifting coach. My powerlifting coach was amazing. Uh, He helped me qualify for the IPL world championships and I took gold when I competed uh, at there. So that's when I like really just started getting more serious, even about training. Like I fell in love with it so much, like the relationship that me and him had and I wanted that. So uh, I ended up becoming a certified personal trainer, online coach, and uh, the rest is history. That's awesome, man. We have uh, with similar backgrounds almost, so to speak, like I grew up kind of like that overweight kid, very insecure. Um, my problem in sports was my speed. I was very slow. So that wasn't my strength. My strength was fine because I'm a bigger dude. Um, but that's funny, dude. Um, so basketball, I never would have pegged you for uh, for basketball player. No, nobody does. Cause I'm only five foot six, <laughs> but I loved it. Just like how, just like how I'm obsessed with fitness right now. I was obsessed like that with, with basketball. Like I'd come home and I'd play from like two to like eight or 9 PM. So I feel like a lot of that discipline that I learned from basketball, that kind of established who I was. And I carried over uh, into like my business and in like my powerlifting journey. That's legit, man. So, I mean, I'm, I'm interested because I know you're huge in powerlifting. Uh, you've coached some champions, you've been a champion, but I want to know like what got you into powerlifting in the first place? Cause most people, when they start working out, it's normally just like the generic, and most people will really fall back on like old school bodybuilding stuff because that's okay. kind of what we're fed. Was your start just the generic one or did you actually start with like deadlifts and, and percentages and all that stuff? Yeah, good question. So uh, there's a lot of, uh, I- I've noticed that a lot of the people who came up in like my era of powerlifting, which was like between like the 2012 and like 2015 era, a lot of us got into it because the in the youtube scene in in fitness some of the uh most like popular youtube channels were like team team 3 dmj matt ogus uh alberto nunez like those type of people and a lot of them always would they were bodybuilders but they would preach like strength training in their off season of powerlifting so i i just wanted to get jacked but they were over here talking about like three by three at 70 percent doing the wendler 531 program or like the conjugate method program, West side barbell, these like super popular powerlifting programs. And I thought that was really cool because they were jacked and they were strong. So I decided to just like run up one of the powerlifting programs that they would do. It was called Wendler 531. So many people have probably done that program. A lot of people's favorite powerlifters and even some of people's favorite bodybuilders have probably ran that program. And I did it and I loved it so much. I kind of just didn't want to do any more bicep curls. You know, I just wanted to squat bench and deadlift heavy. Nice. That's, that's awesome. That we're, we're at opposites there too. Cause I mean, like my first coach, so to speak was, he was a bodybuilder. So I, I was doing a lot of bodybuilding style. He had me doing some sports specific stuff. Cause he knew I wanted to play hockey, but it's funny you bring up the YouTube scene. Cause like 2012 to 2015 YouTube was incredible, but you also had like, you, you had like the bodybuilding style too, like the Hodge twins, um, mm-hmm. Chris Jones and like the bodybuilding guys, but then like 3d MJ and I'm like, they're world-class. Those guys are like legends in the space too. So that's, that's awesome that you had that from the beginning. Whereas I know a lot of people, and I'm not going to name names, they follow or a lot of really not so good YouTubers and yeah. following all their stuff. But um, no, man, powerlifting seems to be like, like you said, you're a very disciplined individual and powerlifting to me is a very disciplined sport. Like bodybuilding, you have to discipline yourself for nutrition. I think 
arguably more so whereas powerlifting like your numbers on on your lifts like that's like you got to be on point to get there yeah for sure man there the, uh, every day like the thing about powerlifting and like bodybuilding is that it, it requires discipline like 24 7 the thing about like uh powerlifting that I, I don't think a lot of people like realize like is that we have just like as many insecure people as like bodybuilding you know like a lot of bodybuilders you know like there's this famous quote that says uh the gym is just like full of insecure people <laughs> and it's like it's so true and a lot of times people think that bodybuilders are just like that but not like powerlifters are too so it kind of like it, it even requires um, a lot of a uh, me- mental discipline like outside of the gym just more like psychologically because you always tend to just compare your numbers to other people or some days like you go in the pro- you go uh, to the gym and the program says to go light but you just want to go heavy you know because you just saw some dude on instagram deadlift 600 pounds and you're just like dude i gotta do this so yeah discipline powerlifting is like a whole nother art for sure yeah i remember when i uh when i competed in 2017 like i got into powerlifting because like it was it was very popular my brother was doing it that kid's a beast so i'm like you know what like i've tested my numbers in the past like let's just let's just compete dude it was hard prepping for that at the same time too i was i was cutting weight because i was like 30 pounds over my what have been a decent competition weight so i was cutting and i was peaking at the same time over the course of like i think it was like six months the mental like well, you're not joking like the mental focus you need to have when your numbers say look you're hitting 85 percent on your squat and even if you don't feel like it dude you're hitting 85 percent of your squat you got to muster up something in there yeah dude for sure like the pain that uh requires to like do powerlifting it's a it's like a different type of pain like your joints hurt like you when you're when you're squatting and you're so just like stiff every day and i actually have like uh, i'm in a couple weeks i'm coaching like the biggest meet that i have i have like 12 clients that are competing in a competition and uh, we're like all in this like group chat and like the other day somebody uh messaged on there saying like yo i'm getting like 10 hours of sleep but i'm like still tired and i'm like yeah that's powerlifting for you like no amount of sleep is going to make you not feel like crap you know like you just have to do the deload week and compete and then that's when you'll start feeling normal again (laughs) yeah it's kind of wild it's 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 tough to describe i think powerlifting to to your everyday person because it to them it just looks like you're just maxing out all the time like you're just lifting heavy shit all the time and it's you are you're you're lifting weight but the feeling of like hitting prs and just hitting numbers that you like maybe you've never thought you could hit before it's incredible. I think maybe that's why people get so sucked into powerlifting. Plus I, I don't know about, I'm sure for you guys as well. Like there's a huge community for powerlifting, like powerlifters stick together, no matter what they support each other. Whereas I think, and correct me if I'm wrong in bodybuilding, it's a little bit different where there's a little bit more like me versus you, like, don't talk to me. I'm not helping you. And powerlifters from my perspective, when I've seen them, even competitors, they'll help each other on their lifts. Yeah. Would you say that happens with you guys too? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we do kind of have like, uh, like our little drama on like this side of, uh, the sport, like there's, there's, that's going to always happen. But for the most part, like, yeah, like, uh, whenever you do go to meet people are very supportive, like the people that you're competing against, they're the ones that are cheering you on. And a lot of times, like the people that you're, uh, competing against, you guys probably train at the same gym and like, they're there cheering you on, spotting you, giving you advice. Like it's a, it's a competitive sport, but it's not like, it's not a cutthroat type of sport where people like wish that you fail. Yeah. People Everyone just wishes each other to do well. Yeah. I remember like I trained out of Fortis fitness and there was people competing against each other in nationals. They were, they were just there helping each other out, looking at each other's lifts. And then on competition day, when I competed, I remember like people were cheering each other on, even if it broke the other person's PR, like they were just, everyone was just happy to see everyone complete lifts. And it's, it's very powerful and uplifting. I think that's the side of power thing. A lot of people don't get. They just think like big ass dudes are throwing up ginormous amounts of weight and, and all that stuff. But it's much more than that. I think the sports evolved in a way. Yeah, it has. I, I just made a caption about that the other day, like how like our eras in fitness, it moves very quickly, like compared to just like other type of lifestyles or other sports. Like in this short time, powerlifting has changed so much. And I feel like bodybuilding has to just the fitness space in general, it, it moves really quickly. Like when I first started, everybody was doing just like these free online programs and anybody who was kind of powerlifting in the gym was kind of like weird, you know, like you were that guy (laughs) that was making a lot of noise in the corner and 
then shortly after that, like people started getting coaches and then I, you started seeing girls competing. And then what was crazy is that like a lot of people thought it was like girls who were just like 200 pounds plus, but now you like see girls who are in like really good shape, like girls who you would think that that bodybuild or something like that. And uh, yeah, like now like this, this powerlifting is like, it's kind of like the cool thing to do. I would say it's pretty awesome, man. Like I love it as a coach. Like that's what you want to see happen. So yeah, that's, I mean, I, I love that you brought up the shift because it's true. Like most people, the general public think like powerlifters are like 300 pound men and 200 pound women, just like deadlifting amazing weights. But like their, their people are in shape, like ripped beyond belief. Like some of the people I've met through powerlifting are the most in shape people I've seen. And that just, it just leads to their discipline. Like they want to hit their numbers. They're very active individuals. They care about their nutrition. So their fitness game is on point, regardless if it's geared towards maxing out or if it's geared towards just aesthetics. Yeah, exactly. And, and a lot of people think that uh, powerlifters were just like these like stiff people who just like lack athleticism. But uh, some of the best like sumo deadlifters that I know that deadlift like 700 plus pounds, like they could do the splits. You know, like uh, there, there's this guy named Sean Noriega. He's one of the top 181 pounders uh, in, in powerlifting. Uh, he, I think he's like five foot six. And I, I believe I saw a video of him like uh, being able to like dunk like a tennis ball or something like that, or like hold on to the rim. So yeah, dude, this does have like good carry over to, to real life for sure. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. What, uh, so what got you into coaching powerlifting and how long, how long have you been doing that? Yeah. So I remember when I first got certified, that was like a huge like mental battle that I went through was like, I could, I could kind of like market myself as the powerlifting coach here at this gym, but I was just like, nobody's like doing that really. Like, how will I get clients? If like, if I tell myself, like, I'm only taking on like powerlifting clients, should I just like do weight, the regular weight loss type of person? So I remember just telling myself, like, I'm going to do both. Uh, if, and, uh, I'm not going to like push for powerlifting. If anybody wants to join me with that, like I'll do it. So, uh, at the gym, I was literally probably the only person who was like powerlifting. Maybe there was like a few other people. And I think people just kind of started seeing me enjoy my training so much and like improving. Cause you see, that's the thing about like, uh, bodybuilding is that it takes like a long time for you to see like an inch gain on your arms, but you could like add 10 to 20 pounds in your deadlift every, every month, probably in the beginning. So a lot of people started seeing me do that at the gym. People were just like, came up to me and asked me like, what do you do? Like, what are you competing? And I was like, yeah, I actually am. And then me posting that on Instagram and people seeing this journey, a lot of people just started reaching out to me that they wanted to do that. Uh, Cause they saw like my journey pretty much like happen before their very eyes. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, how it ended up happening. And then now I just kind of coach, like I would say like 50, 50, like general population and then powerlifting. That's solid, man. Yeah. It's definitely, if you go to a gym and you know, like there's like community gyms, almost like people know each other and see each other very frequently. And you see someone putting up more weight week after week after week, you're going to be like, okay, what's like, what are they doing? Like, I want to do that. Especially in most gyms, I would argue like a lot of people are stuck half the time or they're not pushing to get stronger. Or they don't know how to. So seeing you, I guess, inspired them to, to talk to you about that, which is awesome. Um, when it comes to powerlifting with you guys um there's different federations obviously yep do you have like how many different federations are you coaching across or does it matter yeah there, there we have like three main ones down here uh i kind of just coach people uh with in the uspa and the usapl the i really love the usapl meets um uh, but the thing about them is that they don't really come down too often here in california so I coach a lot of people in the USPA and just like, there, there's kind of like a lot of differences and a lot of similarities. Pretty much the biggest difference is that the USAPL, they do 24 hour weigh-ins. Oh, sorry. The, the USAPL does two hour weigh-ins and the USPA does 24 hour weigh-ins. So um, I always tell people like, I would just, it doesn't even really matter as long as like you do one that you feel like you like. And then as long as it fits within like a date that you'd like, Cause I always tell people like, you know, powerlifting is super tiring. Like make sure you choose a date where you probably don't have finals coming up. You don't yeah. have to worry about like all these other things in life, like, like a three month prep where you don't have to worry about a lot of like other life stuff. So sometimes that ends up being USPA. Sometimes that ends up being USAPL. There's a lot of beef between the two. I never really like get into that. Cause I just think it's like silly to be honest. Yeah. That was happening over here in Canada too. I forget the two federations now. Cause I, I honestly haven't been paying attention, but they were like, I think it was tested versus non-tested 
is yeah. what it comes That's down to. What are the to. other differences too between USPA and USAPL? Yeah, so like people like one group shits on the other, and it's all, honestly like everyone's doing the same thing. <laughs> You're all doing the same sport. It's really nothing to like fight over. Um, it's funny you brought that up. It's kind of the same thing over there. Yeah, it is. Uh, I think what it, I think the where it stems from is that like the really elite, elite, elite athletes, like the top one percent of the sport. You'll sometimes see them getting into debates about it on online because I think the ultimate goal for a lot of them is that they want to get powerlifting to like the Olympics, but it's just really, it'll be really hard because there's so much division between this, this sport. Like we have tested or non-drug tested. We have single ply, multiply, like we have a deadlift bar. We have a stiff bar. There's so many like things like that. I don't know if it'll ever really get done. I think like our best bet is like, we'll probably end up being on like an ESPN two or something like that. <laughs> Which yeah. isn't bad. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think the, yeah, the, it's tough. Cause there's so many variations. Like it, the simplest way would be like just to do raw power thing, I think, because it's, it's yeah. even keel, but I mean, that's way out of my scope anyways, for, for which one deserves to go up when it comes. So when it comes to power, cause I know, again, you've, you've trained some champions and you've become a champion yourself. What are kind of like, if you have to narrow it down, let's, let's talk top three tips or strategies to like, how do you bring yourself from to a championship kind of level? Yeah, I would. So right away, it's like, don't even waste time. Get a coach. That's tip, that's tip number one above everything else. And I follow the, the sport a lot. Uh, I follow fitness in general a lot. There was actually a study where they, uh, they, they asked pro bodybuilders, like how many of them had a coaches and it was like, they asked like 200 pro bodybuilders, male and female, hundred percent of the girls that they asked all said they had coaches. I think something like 70% of all the male pro bodybuilders they asked in the study all said they had coaches in powerlifting, uh, off the top of my head, like the top 10 in the sport all have coaches. Like, dude, it's so hard to program for yourself and be objective. If you don't have a coach, like you're going to, if you write your own program, you're going to you're going to be changing it so much and you're just kind of be going to be, you're going to be spinning your wheels. So that's tip number one is get a coach. Tip number two, it sounds like so cliche, but it's honestly like, just don't compare yourself to anybody. Like just stay patient with it. But it's like, it's so true because this is, and it's cliche because I find myself having that conversation like all the time. And even like the top athletes, like they always say that too. Like don't compare yourself and stay patient. Cause if you compare yourself to somebody, you're going to go off program. Like you're going to slip up. You're going to probably get injured, like trying to push too hard. So yeah, that's, that's tip number two. And then tip number three, I would say is, is that when you, when you find a program, like try to stick with it for at least like four to six months before you like change it, because there's so many people who program hop, like they do one thing this month and they do the next thing the next month. It's like, if, if you're constantly doing that, you're never going to be able to gather data on what works. So just find a program. And then even if it seems like tough or not, like just stick with it. Maybe it doesn't have to be four to six months, maybe just like at least three months, but like gather data, like a lot of the best powerlifting programs out there, they're at least three months. And there's some really tough ones online. Like, I don't know if you've ever heard of one called PH3. It was, it was popularized yeah. by uh, Lane Norton. Lane Norton, yeah, that, that was is, tough. Yeah, that is a ridiculous program. Yeah. That is crazy. And then there's a lot of people who do it and they never like finish it. But I swear that if you finish it, like you're going to end up finding out a lot about yourself. So yeah, that's pretty much, uh, that's, those are my top three tips. Those are, those are incredible, man. And honestly, you can apply those to, to someone wanting to lose fat as well. Like hundred percent, get a coach. Don't compare yourself to others because you're going to see other people's progress and you're going to think, Oh, I'm not making progress. And definitely program hopping is, I think people, I would argue people are more guilty of program hopping for a fat loss phase or trying to lose weight than anything else yep. because they see weight loss is obviously like the number one fitness trend. So on Instagram, most of what you see is do this to lose fat, do this to lose fat. So people are like, Oh, I'm going to do this next. We can do this. Like they have puppy syndrome where they don't know what they're doing and they're all over the place. And like you said, they're spinning their wheels. So those are great tips. And that definitely applies. And I think the last thing you said is important about the program, especially with powerlifting, like, I couldn't picture doing one program for one month and a different program for another. Cause how would I know if my squat's getting better, my bench is going out, my dad, how, how would you, if you don't have the data consistently over 12 to 16 weeks, you wouldn't know. Right. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. And like the, the thing about it too, is that sometimes um, what ends up happening, if you program switch too often, like, let's say you're, you're running one month, like a really, really ridiculously high volume program, right? Like, 
according to studies, like volume is like king, like doing more volume over time. Like that is how you, you make gains. And then let's say you think like, wow, this program is just too much. It's too intense. Then second month, you go on a very low volume program. Well, now you're going to start recovering and then you're going to start making progress. You're going to start hitting PRs. And you're going to think that it's because, oh, like I react better to low volume and like low intensity. But in fact, it's that you made all these gains already in the first month. And now in the second month, when you're doing this lower volume, like you're recovering, but eventually like the volume is going to have to probably go up or the intensity. So you see, that's what ends up happening. If you're always program hopping too much, like it's, it's really hard to like find out what actually works. hundred percent, man. No, I love that. That's great. Uh, when it comes to your coaching, are you doing, are you strictly online or are you in person as well? I'm doing both. Yeah. What's in person coaching like over there? You're in California, right? Yeah. So the, I train in person, I train some people in person. I'll see them anywhere from like one to three days a week. Uh, I have, I have people who, um, who, who are advanced, who like meeting up like at least once or twice a week. But for the most part, I try to keep, uh, the in-person training to be like beginners or intermediates only. And, uh, yeah, I train at this really cool private gym here. It's called uh, orange County strength club. Shout out to this gym, man. It's, it's the best gym that I've ever been to for sure. And I've, I've been to a lot of gyms. So I'm, I'm like super happy that I get to train there. It's like, uh, like it has like those old school powerlifting vibes, but you get like the new school type of powerlifters. It's uh, the owner there is like an old school powerlifter and we have like all the best equipment and uh, yeah, pretty much uh, uh, the personal training here. Uh, that's kind of how we, we do it. Like one of pretty the same as we do everywhere else. <laughs> Legit, man. No, it sounds awesome. Yeah. It's, it's, it says a lot depending on the, what gym you go to. And I think for powerlifting, you need a gym of the sort. Like that's what kind of drove me to, to Fortis fitness here in Toronto. Um, I was, I was going to, uh, just a one-off gym. It was cool. It had all the equipment I wanted, but I, I wanted something more. Like I didn't want to work out at a big box gym. I worked at a big box gym. I don't enjoy training there. Or I didn't. So I found Fortis Fitness through Omar Isaf. I don't know if you followed him on through yes, YouTube. Yeah, I've so, always wanted to go to Fortis Fitness. Dude, yeah, the place is legit. <laughs> the owner, Sean, is amazing too. Like he'll get he'll get equipment that people ask for because he wants everyone to love training there. But it has that vibe. It's like people go there. They're very friendly, but they're there to work. Like they put their work in and then help other people if they need it and they leave. It's not like a like your typical kind of gym where people just like, shoot the shit and don't really do anything and stuff like that. Like it, there's, if you're going to go there, you're going to get stronger pretty much. Um, lucky man. So lucky you get to go there. It was, <laughs> is dope. Yeah. Now that I've moved, I, I might make the trip here and there to go there, but um, I'm building my own home gym. As you can see behind me, there's nothing ready yet. Uh, <laughs> but cool. um, when it comes to, I want to talk about a bit about your, your online coaching journey, just cause I'm an online coach. I'd love to hear from other mm -hmm. online coaches. Yeah. How long have you been doing that, the online portion of it, and how have you found it, over the, especially over the pandemic? Yeah, good question. So, I, yeah, I always like talking about this too, man, because, like, again, the powerlifting veins are in my blood. Like, we help every, everyone uh, out. And I feel like I'm like that as a coach too. So I always – I never hold my secrets. So I always tell people. So I started uh, co online coaching uh, in, like, 2012, actually. But it was, it was cool the way I started uh, because it really just started off as me, like – doing it for fun so i after my like one year transformation or i think it was like i made like a six month transformation post on facebook and this was right after high school and you know everybody always gains weight after high school but you know i ended up getting like abs and stuff and i posted this photo and everybody always knew me as that like skinny fat kid in high school who was like really shy so people were like shocked people were like what the heck like juan got like ripped like, I need to find out what he's doing. So like a bunch of my high school classmates all messaged me. They're just like, yo, dude, like, what are you doing? Like, how, I, I need help. So I told him, I was like, yo, I don't really know much. I just started, but I was like, this is like a program that I do. And this is kind of like the diet that I, that I do if you want to like follow it. So I did that. And then like, I never charged anybody because I just, like I said, I, I wasn't certified or anything like that. And uh, it was like a very loose style of coaching. Like people would send me, it was online coaching before I even knew what it was. People would send me videos and all that stuff. And um, after about a, two years of doing that for free, I realized I had this like giant portfolio of like all these transformation photos. And my girlfriend at the time was just like, why don't you like start charging these people or why don't you get certified? And then I was like, dang, you're right. I should do that. <laughs> like I'm starting to get really busy. So that's when um, I started like um, just like offering like actual personal training services. And I like started promoting that really. 
And uh, the way that I ended up getting clients was just by posting my entire journey, like on Instagram, like my content has definitely evolved. Like before it was just me posting like my lifting videos, uh, talking about what was going on, like no, no real thought to it. Just kind of like, as I was going along and just p- people loved seeing this like transformation, this like journey, like people could see like ev- from where I came from, like, and like to where I had gotten and that motivated like people. Cause they knew that I was like, I wasn't somebody who like showed up to like the Instagram scene, like who was already ripped, you know, like Jack's like people saw me like it happening. So people started reaching out to me and, and reaching out. And then eventually like online coaching took off so far that I was able to quit like my day job. I used to work um, as a personal trainer for the gym. I was just like, dude, this is like my time. to like, just pretty much like do this, go 100% all in. And it was going amazing. Like, dude, like super amazing. Uh, no struggle. Like I, I was a kid who grew up in like Santa Ana, not the best part of like Southern California, like struggling, like always seeing like my parents struggle and like live paycheck to paycheck. And things were like finally going amazing. Like I was never worried about money. Like whatever I wanted to buy, like I could buy it. I was taking care of like all my friends and like all my clients. And then the pandemic happened and dude, I was like super afraid. Like I wasn't, I wasn't sure what was going to happen, but something inside me just like told me like, yo, this is like your part to like level up. Like this is going to be the, the, the part of like this new fitness era where like all the online coaches and all the trainers fall off. Cause if, if you remember, there was like a time when like everybody was getting certified and everybody was an online coach yeah. and that's not gonna last, you know? So I saw a lot of people just falling off and I took it as my time to like rise above. And in fact, like it, the pandemic ended up helping me out. <laughs> like, I think people saw me that like, I wasn't slowing down and I gave people a lot of motivation that, Hey, like, it doesn't matter if we're like stuck at home, like we can still make gains. Like, I'm going to show you all these push up variations. I'm going to show you what you can do with like a backpack, like just throw some books in there and let's like dumbbell row it. Let's do some squats with it. And uh, more than ever, people hit me up for it. And my business like to continue to take off after that. That's fucking awesome, man. I'm pumped. No. And honestly, you said something legit in the beginning. It's and for every coach I've ever vouched for, talked to or podcasted with you're genuine. Like that's, that's we're coaches because we want to help people. That's the type of coach you want to find, whether it's me, whether it's Juan, whether it's someone else, just make sure they're looking out for your best interest because coaches who want to help people are the best coaches, not the coaches who charge the most or the coaches who are in it for the money because it's a good business or whatever. Juan did this for free in the beginning. So did I, like a lot of coaches do this for free because either we didn't know any better. We just did it to help people. And it's funny you brought up the online coaching thing because it's, it's going two ways. Like the pandemic in the beginning, especially maybe in the summer, a lot of, all of a sudden, everyone was an online coach. All of a sudden everyone's online. And like, we've been doing this for years. Yeah. Um, and now that the pandemic's like set in for a long period of time, most of these people are gone. And I think that's key through the pandemic. And uh, my buddy, Andrew Code said like, the trainers, the online coaches who are, are really good at what they do are going to be fine. Yes, they might struggle a little bit through the pandemic, but they're going to be fine because they're good coaches. They know how to market themselves. They know how to coach people. Um, they're solidified. Well, all these new people, all of a sudden, our online coaches, it's not for them because they're just doing it because it's popular, because it's easy, or they think it's easy anyway, whereas there's foundation to this. You've been doing this for years. Same with me. Um, and there's more to it than just like, oh, hey, I coach people online now right? In fitness and in everything, people are going to fall off. Like that's why they, they call it the 1%. The 1% doesn't just go for like money and career. The 1% goes for the gym and relationships and career, like everything. All, all you have to do is just stay consistent and you'll out, you'll, you'll outlast the competition. Like most of them are just going to quit. And if, if all you do is just continue to grind. And even if you're making a lot of mistakes, even if like you're only making 1% progress every month, if you do that for 12 months and you do that for like five, 10 years, like you're going to grow, you're going to make this huge quantum leap and you're going to be in a whole completely different place than when you started. But the thing about it is that most people quit when like times get hard, people will quit once they plateau and they can't add like 10 more pounds to their squat or when the weight scale hasn't moved or businesses will quit once like they have like a slow month and they haven't like made a profit. Maybe they lost money and they just jump ship. 
but like all you people don't realize that all it takes is just like a little bit more like time and consistency and like more putting it putting in of a work and like putting out content helping people and then like after that like it's it's like when you're gonna see like this like you know, all your hard work come into fruition and i remember that there was this uh one time where i uh, in the summer, right when like I was kind of like in the beginning of like the pandemic, I was like wondering like, man, is like this actually going to work out? Like are a lot of people going to be hitting me up? Like, am I meant to do this? Cause I was like, I was struggling at like one point and some guy like reached out to me and uh, he told me, he was just like, yo dude, like, uh, I, I just like, I need, uh, I need help. Like, I, I don't know if you know me, but we, we met at the gym like a long time ago. And pretty much th this was a guy that I met at the gym one day, like when I was uh, a freshman in college. And I just like told him, I was like, dude, you have really good squat form. We exchanged Instagrams. I didn't even, I didn't even know that we exchanged Instagrams. I completely forgot about that part. He never liked my photos. He never commented on my posts. He never even, I don't even remember him looking at my stories. And then he told me that like I had motivated him from like all these years of just seeing him. And that I made like a post one day talking about like, how to get over like your, uh, your, your breakup or like your relationship and stuff like that. And he told me that helped him out so much. And it was crazy that this was a client that I had pretty much been like working on to get for like eight, seven or eight years. It took me seven or eight years pretty much to close him. But now he's been like working with me ever since. So it's like, you never know like who's going to happen. But if I had stopped coaching, like I would have never ended up working with him. So it's crazy. That's, man. that's crazy. Yeah. For any, for anyone coaching online and posting content and not getting many likes or comments. Just know that people are seeing your shit. People yeah. are always seeing your stuff. I've had one of my best clients right now, follow me for two or three years. And we talked occasionally, but it wasn't until last year where he signed on and he is fucking crushing it. So any online coaches out there getting discouraged by a lack of likes, don't likes do not equal income ever. Um, just keep being a good coach, keep helping people put out the content. Things will get better for sure so true dude yeah like and i whenever i i like have like a business idea and i wonder like if it's gonna work i always just think back to like did it work on me and i'm just like nice. okay if it worked on me like it's gonna work on somebody else so for example like lane norton uh, i subscribe to his website he has like this really cool website where he's always like releasing like um new fitness uh like science like studies and stuff like that on nutrition supplementation all this stuff and I remember he promoted that thing like for years, like three to four years until I finally was just like, man, let me like go and like see if this thing actually is good. And I've been subscribed now for like five years. And like, again, it took me about four years to finally like warm up to doing that. Another, another funny uh, thing is like, I recommend everybody, every online coach like gets an email list, like start taking emails and like setting up like um, uh, email chains and stuff like that and sending it to people. Cause that really works. I think a lot of people think that email is dead, but it works. Like if you, if you uh, work hard at it, um, like four or five, six years ago, uh, I went to like Domino's. I haven't been to Domino's in so long. And uh, you know, they do this thing. Do you guys have a Domino's pizza? Right? Oh yeah. Yeah. We do. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah <laughs> like um, they, they told me like, Hey, uh, you just got this like free coupon where you can get like 50% off in your next like order or whatever. Uh, just type in your email or whatever. Right. And I was in their email list ever since then. And <laughs> at least like four or five days a week, they annoy the hell out of me. They say, Hey, like today we're having a 10% off on like a pizza or like buy one pizza, get the other one half off. Or, Hey, you could, you just want a free soda to your, your order. And like for years, I have never opened these dang emails. I don't even like Domino's that much, but the other day I just craved pizza. And the first pizza place that popped in my mind was Domino's. Yep. And I was just like, damn it. I think I'm going to get some Domino's. They got you, buddy. <laughs> and they got me. It took them five, six years and they got me. And I know better. I know marketing. I know emails, all this, but they got me. So if it works on me, it's yeah. going to work on the average person who doesn't know anything about this. I love that. That's good. And that's <laughs> funny. It's funny too. Cause like Facebook and Instagram and all that shit, it can go down tomorrow. And what, what would be left is email people's emails and phone numbers will always be there. So it's, it's a good thing you bring that up because social media, yes, everyone loves having a presence and being on there, which is fine. But for coaches, like an email list is very important as demonstrated by Juan's pizza craving. It's true. They'll, they'll hook you. And honestly, like this is no word of a lie. Last year, like before, was it before? Yeah, before the baby, before the move, I was talking to my wife and I know she subscribed to about 10 to 12 different like retailers, clothing, makeup, whatever. 
no legit, no lie here. I made her unsubscribe. <laughs> I made her unsubscribe from all the, because like she was getting daily emails. Like this is deal. This is on sale. And I'm like, look, I love you. I trust you. But here's the thing. They're going to email you every day. You're going to window shop. Window shopping turns into real shopping. We do not, are not shopping right now. Same thing happens. The marketing gets to you, whether you think about it or not. Anyone out there, look at your email list. Look who's sending you emails. Where are you going to, if you're constantly getting Uber Eats, DoorDash, skip the dishes, food places, whatever take a look at maybe that's the reason why you're having a hard time because you're constantly being berated with these food places. Like my email list is like, I have a few fitness guys to subscribe to fitness people, my billing, any clients that email me, like I'm not really that like to subscribe to emails list right now because it's a distraction. I don't know about you, but definitely marketing is there. Like be aware for sure. Dude. Yeah. And it's, it's so similar to like what we were talking about earlier with like likes don't matter and stuff like that because like if um i use a i use a email uh response uh, email marketing uh, website called get response uh similar to like mailchimp uh mailchimp kicked me out because i used too many cu- cuss words so i ended up having to get <laughs> yeah i <laughs> so ended up having to use get response so That's they're cool awesome. shout, out to, shout out to get response for like nice. not kicking me out letting me say a couple f's <laughs> but uh That's yeah so um like when you could, when you send emails, it shows you like how many people have actually opened it. And I, whenever I get like a low open rate, like I don't, I don't even trip about it because like, just with like that Domino's thing, like I never opened their emails, but I saw them Dick and it's man. similar to how like content, like you'll post a lot of stuff. People are going to see it. They probably won't like it, but like, it doesn't even really matter. Like people probably, people don't like it for like whatever reason, but it, it's going to work eventually. Some people are just scrollers. I think they're not double tappers, which is fine. Whatever. We love everyone. doesn't matter. We love the haters too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As long as you're looking at our stuff, we're all good. Um, awesome, man. Tell me what's next for you, bro. Yeah. So for me, I'm like very, just like, it sounds so lame always saying this, but it's not, I'm like just a very in the moment type of person. Like I, I used to be the type of person that would set like these five or 10 year goals and don't get me wrong. It, it, I think it is important. But to me, like, I'm just, I'm not that emotionally attached to that. Like, I worry more about, like, just, like, what probably can happen, like, next month. So, for me, what's next is uh, I have a powerlifting competition coming up in two weeks that I'm training, uh, like, 10, 12 clients in. And I just hope that a lot of them end up doing well. Uh, I have two or three people in that competition that are going for some state records. Nice. And, yeah, I would just like to for, the, for them to do it, you know, because uh, the, the, those people are people who are uh, – started off with me from like ground zero, like when they had never even touched the barbell. So just continue to win these powerlifting competitions, get my name out there, put a lot of good content, just like step up my content game. And then after that, just continue to grow as a person and like learn and just have fun, enjoy this ride. Cause what I've learned from like my, my chosen ones training, like my business career is that man, time really flies like super fast. Like if you don't enjoy like all these little moments, like what's the whole point of it? You know, like it's, it's going to pass by, like you're going to make money. Like you have to like go out there and spend some of that money. You have to enjoy it. Like you have to enjoy these like eight to 10 training sessions that you have with like clients and stuff like that. Because like one day, like that may all be gone. And like the pandemic taught me that. So yeah, just continue to just like live in the moment pretty much. That's love my it, goal. Man. That's for, that's a gym, man. Yeah. I love that. hundred percent. Are you, are you competing yourself anytime soon? No, I just competed uh, like a month and a half ago. And uh, my body just like needs a break because <laughs> like Legit. last year uh, I, I prepared for like four competitions and each, each of them got, okay, yeah, that's a lot. I know each of them ended up getting canceled like last minute, which is why I ended up having to do so many, but I never, I never prepare for that many. So I'm taking a long, <laughs> like a long break. Probably if I do compete, maybe at the end of the year, if not, not till next year, I'm in no rush. <laughs> yeah. 2021 off season for sure yeah <laughs> legit man nice that's awesome so tell everyone i mean your content game is is legit as hell tell everyone where they can find you where follow you all that stuff yeah so everybody can uh go on my instagram it's the underscore chosen juan one uh or people can uh subscribe to my website it's juan salgado trainer.com and on there i have a, a free uh, ebook it's titled eating out while dieting so it's like a 12 page guide on how to pretty much be able to go out to eat to like your favorite restaurants and like track the calories there, how to go about that, how to like have a social life while still being able to lose weight and stuff. So yeah, you just go on my website, juansalgadotrainer.com. 
you type in your email and the book will send it to you. And then I'll be sending you Domino's coupons. Yeah, buddy. For the next few years. <laughs> <laughs> Legit. No, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Everyone go and follow this man. Clearly he's a great coach, cares about his clients, cares about honestly just helping people. And that's, he's a genuine individual. So thank you so much for taking the time, man. I really appreciate it. Appreciate you having me, man. It was, it was awesome. You, you asked some really good questions. Thanks, man. Awesome. I'm new to this podcasting game too. So that's good. That's good to know. Oh, really? Um, yeah, dude, you're, you're honestly better than a lot of other people. So that's legit. Good. Thank you, man. Awesome. Uh, Everyone listening. Thanks so much for listening. Catch us on the next episode and uh, take care.